Hey everybody, JB the Ranch Mechanic here, coming at you today with a video on our 2007 Ford Exploder. This is a, I believe it's an XLT, um, and it does have the 4.6 liter V8 in it. So we're going to be going over a couple of things today. I brought it in yesterday because the boss said it was overdue for an oil change. This is a vehicle that our seasonal guys use, and it's also a vehicle that we kind of keep as a spare to run into town if someone needs to grab parts or something. So it just kind of sits. It doesn't really get a whole lot of use, but when people drive it, they usually take it to you know Salt Lake to go pick parts up or whatever. So it goes from not getting used very much to getting a whole bunch of miles put on it, and no one really pays attention to the mileage. So when he said it was overdue, um, it's got almost 197,000 miles on it, and oil change is supposed to be done at 195,100. So yeah, we're a little bit overdue. Um, and yes, we do run diesel oil in this thing, uh, Rotella T6 5W40, the same stuff that we use in most of our Honda ATVs, um, some of our other diesel trucks, although we've kind of switched over to some Schaefer's stuff for the uh, turbo diesel trucks. But anyway, that's neither here nor there for this video. But anyway, I noticed that we had a check engine light when I brought it in. So I uh, hooked up my my little Actron scanner here. My, my nicer one is in need of a firmware update, but this still works for pulling codes. Um, and what we have are uh, two different codes showing. Uh, P0340, which is a camshaft position sensor A circuit, bank one. So that's, that is gonna be the driver's side bank. Bank one is the driver's side on this vehicle, which is typical of most vehicles. And we also have a P0344, which is another camshaft position sensor circuit code. This is a sensor A, bank one, B1, as you can see, if you can see. If my phone will focus you. So basically you're gonna notice that I've got four trouble codes on here and the codes are the same between the two. So really we have two, but the difference between them is that we have two confirmed codes and two pending codes. And the, uh, if you're not familiar with OBD2 codes, how this works is a pending code means the check engine light has not been turned on by a pending code, but the, the computer has detected something wonky in the circuitry and it's not meeting the specifications that it's programmed for. So either a sensor is out of, uh, out of range or something is broken or something ain't right and it detects a problem. Now, a pending code will turn into a permanent code if it detects that issue for two or more drive cycles. So basically you get in the car, you start it up, you drive, it warms up, it cools down, you shut it off, and then you do that twice. If it happens for two consecutive drive cycles, it will set a permanent code and that's what illuminates your check engine light. So we do have what I presume is a bad crankshaft position sensor. Okay, hold up. Doing the video editing on this video and I realized that I kept saying crankshaft position sensor. My bad, that's not what we're working on. We're working on the camshaft position sensor. Now on this vehicle and on most vehicles, there is a crankshaft position sensor, but that's not what this code was about. We're working on the camshaft position sensor. Have you ever had one of those days where your brain kind of flip flops on you and you get stuck saying the wrong thing over and over and over again? That's exactly what happened here. So I apologize for the inconvenience there, but we're working on the camshaft position sensor in this video, guys. Just instead of editing out all those bad spots, uh, I just figured I'd throw this in for you. So camshaft position sensor. Back to the video. So these two codes, P0340 and 0344, are just a intermittent, an intermittent circuit fault on that same sensor, bank one, sensor A. So that's gonna be the driver's side camshaft position sensor. We're gonna replace it. I'm gonna show you how. Probably one of the easiest fixes you can do on a 4.6 liter V8. Um, super easy. So we're gonna go ahead and crack on with that and I will get you set up and show you what I'm doing. All right, here we are in the engine bay. Now, um, if you're not familiar with what a crankshaft position sensor does, this is the crankshaft position sensor right here, this guy. If you can see that, let me zoom in a bit. Here we go. Um, it's just a, a single sensor held on by one, right below my finger there is an eight millimeter bolt. So you just take that out, disconnect this, this wire connector right here, and then you just pop it out. Now what has happened to this sensor? My presumption, um, it's a little bit more cleaned up now. I sprayed a bunch of brake, brake cleaner on it earlier but it was completely covered with oil residue. Now, how a camshaft position sensor works, this is the new one I just got from Napa. Um, how these things work is basically they plug right into the front of the, the cylinder head here, and on the end is just a big old magnet. These are basically just Hall effect sensors, and what a Hall effect sensor is, you see them a lot to indicate RPM. 
they basically, this magnet counts the teeth on the camshaft sprocket, and by how fast those teeth are passing in front of the magnet, that allows the computer to determine how fast the crankshaft is moving in relation to the engine. Now you see this O-ring on here. When those O-rings fail, it allows oil to seep past them and get into the electronic circuitry in the back of this sensor. This entire thing was completely coated with oil, so my presumption is that we had that exact problem. The O-ring has probably torn or just worn out and failed and allowed oil to completely cover this thing and it's just blown out the electronics inside. These are not very expensive to fix. I think this sensor was maybe 25 bucks at the top end from Napa and you can get them cheaper online if you order them from Rock Auto or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a super easy fix. It's just a single eight millimeter bolt that holds the thing on then you just pop the old one out, put the new one in, bolt it in, and then reattach your wiring connector at the back. On your, and you have two of these, one for each cylinder head obviously, so your other one is going to be over here. On, uh, so your bank two sensor is gonna be over here and that's underneath the air intake, but it's in the same location. The only difference is you just need to pull off your, your air intake tube here, just a worm clamp here and a worm clamp here to take this out of the way. And you can take your air box lid off and then you have direct access to it under the passenger side. So it's the exact same part number for both sides. It installs the same way on both sides, just a single eight millimeter bolt and a wiring clip, that's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this out and we're gonna clear that code and see if it goes away. Now, apologies for the kind of awkward view here, but we are kind of looking at it from the top down. So you're basically sitting on the radiator and sensor is right here for reference. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this going, take it out. All right, so the top of our wiring clip right here, it's all full of gunk, so that might make taking this thing off a little bit interesting. If I cannot get my fingers caught in the fan blade, that would also be great. Might need to get a pick down in there. There's a bunch of sludge built up on it. So I'm just trying to scrape some of that off with my finger here. So I can actually get that little clip to depress. Right now, she'd be stuck. I'll be right back. All right, well, she's not cooperating with me. So we're gonna do this backwards. I'm gonna take this uh, bolt out of it. I can get my ratchet in there and we'll pull the sensor out first and then we'll disconnect it of course it doesn't want to go they're tight this is the kind of job where a battery operated ratchet or even a pneumatic ratchet really saves your bacon just don't lose your socket Get our bolt out of there. Don't lose your socket or your bolt. Okay, we got our bolt out. We'll just pull the whole sensor out of here and give it a wiggle. There she goes. There's our old one. Okay. Rewiring the camera here a little bit better. All right, so we got our sensor out right here. And to get a better view of that clip, what had happened is that oil residue leaked past this o-ring here and got all over the I mean, you see the build up here where i couldn't get the spray on there but it had built up all down inside here where that clip is and that was full of dust and dirt and basically a caked muddy mess so when you push this release tab in the back it wasn't doing anything it had nowhere to travel so now that i've got most of that cleaned out you should be able to push down on that guy yeah there we go slide the old sensor right out. So that's a simple, pretty simple job. So we'll take our old one out. I'm gonna get some contact cleaner and spray out that, uh, spray out that connector real quick. It's just about empty, time to resupply. Oh, it is empty. Just one little shot. Oh, there we go. Get some of that junk out of there, get the excess liquid out. That looks good. And we'll take our fancy new sensor and put that in. Let me move you back to where you were so you can see. Okay. I know you can't see it right now because of the angle of this thing, but the, the new sensor clips in exactly how the old one came out. You just push until it clicks. Standard, regular stuff here, nothing fancy. Now here's our new sensor. You just line up the hole. With a threaded hole in the block, a sensor goes in the bigger hole right above it. 
try not to get a bunch of garbage on it. But as you can see, our nice new magnet on the front there is nice and clean and fresh. So we'll just push this guy right back in. Make sure it seats well. Sometimes it's because that O-ring is brand new. It's a little bit of a chore to get the seat, but there we go. And we'll get our bolt started. The thing doesn't have to be seated all the way before you get your bolt started. You can kind of use that to finish the job here and have the bolt push it the rest of the way in. You just want to make sure you don't put too much strain on that little ear that's sticking off that the bolt passes through. You don't want to snap that off. Unlikely, but you know, stranger things have happened. Okay, so we got our bolt started. Grab our socket here. And I'm just gonna start that by hand because not quite enough clearance to get my ratchet and the socket in there because of those fan blades. So I'm just feeding the bolt in manually. And we'll get our ratchet back in here. That to line up. There we go. Almost. There she is. She's seated. Okay. German spec. It's good and tight. And just make sure our connector is seated all the way. And it is. It's locked on. So there you go. New uh, crankshaft position sensor installed. All right, so now that we have our new sensor installed, we'll go ahead and uh, check all the fluids on this thing. We'll hook our scan tool back up, fire her up, clear out the uh, old codes, and uh, see if any uh, pending codes show back up. The permanent codes will not clear out using a scan tool. Those only go away if the uh, issue is resolved. So I'm hoping that uh, if we did this correctly, and I think we did, and the sensor truly was the problem, then uh, eventually those uh, permanent codes are going to go away on their own. So we'll see what happens, but we'll uh, go ahead and jump back into the cab and see what's going on here. Okay, we're back in the rig here. We got it running. The battery is just about shot on this POS, so I'm kind of letting it run. Um, okay, scan tool is angry at me because the battery is low, so I'm going to try to reconnect here. Okay, so we're connected. Let's go back here. Let's uh, clear out these codes. Command sent. Codes remaining. Zero. Our check engine light is off and the permanent codes went away as well. Now that that sensor has been replaced, there is nothing pending in the computer whatsoever. All right, so problem solved. We've been idling here for a few minutes now, letting the battery charge back up and no issues there. But now that we're uh, done with this, let's do a little bit more uh, chatting about why this original sensor failed. Now, obviously the O-ring was worn out because of all that oil residue that had blown past it and was coating that connector. So when that happens, um, you get all that gunk build up on there and it makes it really hard to remove the connector and it will affect the internal circuitry and kind of blow it out. But the bigger issue that I've found is that I don't know how well the camera is going to pick up on this because it's having issues focusing right now for whatever reason. But you can see on kind of the top half there, that's cracked. That's actually cracked. So there has been a physical delamination of the end of the sensor where the magnet is. The new one, the magnet is exposed. On this original one, this original Motorcraft sensor, um, that's just covered with plastic completely. And that plastic has delaminated and come off of there. It's really having trouble. There we go, kind of. Um, and you can see that that has cracked about halfway around. So I'm sure that with all the oil sloshing around in there, it just got completely on the inside of this sensor and just cooked all the electronics. So that's our failure mode. That's why this sensor went bad. Um, but these are the original sensors to the best of my knowledge. And this thing has almost 200,000 miles on it. So, I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but it happens. There you go. Quick tip on how to change the uh, crankshaft position sensor. Very easy fix, very cheap fix. If you end up getting that error code, now you know what it is, now you know how to fix it. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all of you. Have a great week, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.